Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm out just outside my door in the woods near my house, and I'm checking out my maple trees. This is a follow-up to the episodes on maples that I've done. The first one was how to identify different kinds of maple trees. The second one was deciduous trees in the winter. What's going on inside those trees at this time of the year? And then last week, I did a how do you tap a maple tree, and I showed you how to do it. We set the taps. So today Today we're gonna go look and see gosh is there sap in those things <laughs> I'm always amazed when they are so today's episode is about harvesting sap boiling the sap down to maple syrup and how do you know it's maple syrup yet and some of the precautions and things you need to do along that way so stay tuned and let's check out this maple tree and see if we got some sap in it right here in your backyard you never know what you're gonna find and there's a make this basin. It's like it's on. on yours. Dog woods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So let's go up and check out this can. This one I actually set on this tree this morning at about. 7.38 a.m. Let's check it out. Whoa, look at the sap dripping out of there. Is that not awesome? That is so cool. And let's look inside and it's half full. This is a two gallon can and it's half full. That is just awesome. It's a beautiful day today. Unbelievable compared to the ice storm and the, my last video. And here you can see a tree that got knocked down in the ice storm i'll cut that up later for wood and let's see how this one is doing that is amazing since yesterday evening when i emptied it there's another gallon of sap in that one that is really great i'm pretty excited now let's take a walk up here check out another one you can see there's no leaves out on any of these trees. I identified them back in the fall when their leaves still on, but I've gotten pretty good identifying them by the bark. This one, well, we've got about a quart in there, but it's actively dripping out, not as much as some of the other trees. And you'll see a lot of difference. Uh, you know, some trees will produce two gallons of sap and the bucket will overflow in 24 hours and others will produce more slowly but this one might just be starting up keep in mind we had a lot of freezing weather and freezing rain and probably at least a week or more under zero degrees celsius or under 32 below the freezing point so this is really this is the warmest day we've had in 2021 well let's check out this tree Remember I told you there's a lot of different ways to go about this. I had an extra tap on hand, so I punched a hole through the side of, of this milk jug. This tree is producing about a gallon every 12 hours. I just emptied this one again this morning. So a lot of different ways to tap. I like those tin cans, but you know, you can use just about anything. So this is really a fun part of the process. Remember, I've got food grade, sanitized. I keep everything super, super clean. Everything I use, I wash with warm soapy water, rinse several times, sterilize in 21 water to bleach solution, rinse, keep everything super, super clean. So in order to facilitate pouring this in here, I got a funnel that I can put in my milk carton like this and this is better done with a partner. I'm on my own today. I used to do this with my biology classes. We had maple trees outside of the school. They love the activity. I mean, there's biology, chemistry, history. Uh, there's so many different uh, parameters to this, uh, this lesson, this activity. It's great for kids, families, students. And, and it's also like, you know, a really green industry. Here I go, I'll pour it into this milk jug.
That looks like almost a whole gallon. It's uh, about two o'clock in the afternoon right now. About six hours worth of sap today. Pretty good take. Put the pan back up on the tree. Pick up my lid and I'll head on to the next, the next tree. So here I am with a plastic milk jug and it makes me think back. You know, this was all started and done by the indigenous peoples of the Americas for thousands of years. And there's some great history to research there, the different ways they made products from the sap of trees, different ways they used it, and also the history as well as legends of how it got all started. Remember, I don't want you to just watch videos and learn from me and just learn from videos. I want you to go out and do research and I'm hoping that I stimulate ideas and curiosity and make you want to learn more than, than what I'm giving you. So it's a really cool thing. So instead of metal buckets, they had wood splines. They used their hatchets to cut angles into the bark and then they put a little wood spline under there and the water would drip into probably birch bark little buckets or containers. Then how do they boil it? You know, we're gonna, I'm going to go back and boil it in the metal, uh, metal pot. You know, they didn't have metal. So how did they boil it? Well, they, one of the ways they did it was by digging out a log uh, cutting out the wood out of the center of a log, putting the sap in there, then dropping hot rocks from a fire into the water until it boiled down. They didn't have containers that could keep syrup for a long time like we, we could because we, you know, we had glass containers we could put syrup in. Indigenous peoples boiled it down to sugars and, crystal, and crystallized it. And so that's another cool thing to research or beyond what I can share with you in just a few minutes today. So once I have about 10 gallons of sap, which I do now, I like to start to get ready to boil it down. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. But first, let's take a look at this sap. What does maple sap look like? Looks like the purest crystal clear water you've ever seen. No odor. Ah, tastes fantastic. In fact, this is a green industry out of Vermont and other places in the north where they actually bottle maple sap and then sell it as a natural healthy drink. So that's something else you might want to research. There's a lot of different ways to boil down sap. I've got this almost five gallon, I think it's 20 quart, 21, 21 liter pan. And what you want is something really wide because the wider it is, the greater the surface area and the faster sap will evaporate and you'll get to the maple syrup stage much faster. You can boil it indoors or outdoors, but if you boil it indoors, you know, keep in mind that you're going to be producing a lot of uh, steam and moisture in the air. During the winter time when it's cold, the air tends to dry out with your heating systems. So I like to put my pot on top of this, my wood stove here. And at the same time I'm boiling the sap down, I'm moisturizing the humidity in the air in a more healthy way for my household. You can boil it outdoors on a propane stove. You can boil it on your barbecue uh, grill. You can boil it over an open fire outdoors, which I think I would do if my grandkids were here because that just romanticizes the whole process. But even here, using my wood stove to do it is a carbon neutral activity. And the reason it's carbon neutral, even though I'm burning wood and producing CO2, that CO2 would have been produced anyway by fungi, bacteria, wood-eating insects, termites, beetle larvae that break down and decompose wood to get the energy from it. And as they do, they take in oxygen, metabolize it, and release CO2. So while my wood stove is releasing CO2, I'm not using any electrical sources to heat my house. I'm not using natural gas. I'm not using petroleum-based products. My house is heated with a carbon neutral energy. Now I can make my green industry maple syrup with carbon neutral energy to produce it. Before I pour my sap into my boiling container, I like to filter it. I've got uh, here, I've got a, 
a little metal screen filter, and I got a piece of cheesecloth that I'm going to put down in here. Because you'll notice when you start collecting sap from trees, that bucket's not sealed tight, and things will fall into it. Little pieces of bark, pieces of twigs, pollen, anything that's, that's blown in the wind. And every once in a while, I'll pull out a beetle or a moth off the top. So uh, I like to filter that stuff out. It's really not that necessary, but I like to do it. Remember too, when you store your sap till you need it, you want to keep it below 38 degrees so that bacteria won't get into it. Now you will boil it later so the bacteria in there aren't harmful from a food standpoint, but they can break, start breaking down some of the sugars, reduce your sugar content, and potentially release some bad tasting chemicals in there. So it's best to keep it below 38 degrees. And always use a food safe container that you've washed with soapy water and sterilized or sanitized with a 20 to one water to bleach solution. So I got a good fire going here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this sap and pour it in through the cheesecloth. Uh, this is fortunately fits right across the top of that. And I'll be beginning with a pretty good clean product. And we'll let this boil down. Well, good morning. It's the next day. It's about seven o'clock in the morning. I'm having a cup of coffee here. And behind me on my stove, 10 gallons of maple sap have now been reduced to about, oh, I'd say a gallon, a gallon and a half. Once it gets down to this point, I like to finish it on the stove because the moment it goes from being sap to maple syrup happens very, very quickly. And you really gotta keep an eye on it. A lot of times, right at that moment or a few moments before, it'll froth up and sometimes over boil, so you gotta keep a watch on it at this time. To verify that it's syrup, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can do it with a candy thermometer, like this one. You can do it with a hydrometer, like this one, which I think I might feature in a separate episode and really talk about the science uh, behind it and how it measures density and how it works and how it actually tells you the exact percent of sugar that you have in your maple syrup. The last way to do it is a spoon test <laughs> and that's my favorite. You put the spoon in and when it really just drips and sticks onto that spoon instead of just running off like water, you know you've got maple syrup. So we'll keep an eye on this process. And I have to say, this room is full of the beautiful aroma of maple syrup. It's an indescribable smell. It's really great. And here's some more science to throw into the process. This is my candy thermometer, which is used by candy makers to make candy. And I'll be using it today to determine when my maple syrup is ready. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level. Well, here in Floyd County, I'm at 2,700 feet above sea level. So the boiling point of water here is much lower. The higher you go up, the lower the atmospheric pressure, the easier it is for water molecules to release from the attraction of forces of the molecules, and it'll evaporate and boil at a lower temperature. Here at 2,700 feet, Water boils 207 degrees. Again, at sea level, it's 212. The sap turns to syrup when the temperature reaches seven degrees above the boiling point. So 207 plus seven is 214. So when I measure the temperature of this sap with my candy thermometer, once it reaches 214 degrees, I'll know it's turned to syrup. Right now, it's at 209 degrees. This apparatus is a hydrometer. It's not really necessary to make maple syrup. I got it because it's a great teaching tool for my biology classes. But if you're selling maple syrup commercially, maple syrup is maple syrup at 66% sugar content. If it's not 66% sugar content, it's not maple syrup. So th this is a tool to verify the sugar content. But what I'm gonna do with it today 
is just uh, verify that it's syrup and show you how to use it. Um, I'm going to do a separate video to explain the science behind this, which is related to temperature and density and sugar density in water. So uh, it's a little more complicated, but it's a really good lesson. So basically how this works is I'm going to put hot syrup in here and I'm going to take this hydrometer and very carefully drop it down into that syrup. I've got a red line here for hot syrup when it, if the hydrometer floats to that red line, I know I have syrup and it's ready to go. So all you really need to do to, if you're making maple syrup at home is to do a spoon test. You don't really need a candy thermometer. You don't need the hydrometer. You can use a spoon. How does the food spoon test work? Well, take a spoonful of syrup like this and pour it out. And you see how it just pours out like water? So it's not syrup yet. When it's syrup, it'll stick to that spoon and it'll apron and you'll see that syrup kind of just kind of flow down on the edge of it. And that's all you really need to do to test the syrup. The syrup's been boiling for a while and all of a sudden it's starting to foam up and that's usually the first indicator that it's just about syrup. So I'm going to turn down the heat now and let's do some of our our different tests and see where we are with this syrup. So I check the boiling point and it is right at 214 degrees. So I think I think we're really good here. And here's the hydrometer test. See that red line? That's the hot 60 and it's right in between my two red lines right up there on it. So that means my sugar content is right almost exactly 66 percent which is the legal definition of maple syrup and lastly here's the spoon test now watch that apron onto that spoon and you see it's sticking all over and before when i did that it just ran off like water and now it's aproning on that spoon wow it's fantastic so this is the first pint of my first batch for the 2021 maple syrup season. And it really tastes good. Listen, you can also filter this too. There's some sediment in here that is produced during the process. It's harmless, but filtering it one more time can refine it and uh, improve the color and take out some of that uh, texture that might be there. Use a food grade filter research this too there's a lot of sophistication and multiple filters you can make this process simple or as uh, sophisticated as you like i hope you enjoyed nature at your door today please subscribe if you, if you like what i do check out my other stuff too uh, if you have any comments man i love to hear from my viewers please leave comments at the end of my videos on youtube so thanks for watching nature at your door we'll see you next time